So good morning everyone and welcome back. So this is a follow on now from the Christmas special which you just watched. So this is this is part one of the series. I don't know how many videos are going to be because this is part one of my journey in which I went out to the local woods around Norwich and to see what I could find to give me the dinner of which you just watched me eat. So very very important though if you are going to go foraging for wild food, berries, bush, uh, nuts, plants, animals or anything like that you need to know exactly what you're going to get yeah, and um, before I went out and did all this stuff I've done lots and lots of research I've read a load of books here yeah, like today I've got um, the Ray Mears sort of essential bushcraft sort of thing on here where I've marked a little section on here where um, I'm looking at the berries and which I could find around this area yeah so uh, yeah so we've got lots of edible berries in which I could find around this area so the sun is actually whiting out the video um, sort of behind so and today right behind me is actually a rosehip bush so this is what I come out to look for because as you just saw I made a lovely rosehip um, fruit leather and also a little bit of jam as well or well, hopefully I made some jam if I haven't I'll crop, crop this out yes yeah, so we've got the rose hips over here I'm not going to go what to look out for because you need to be able to identify these things yourself don't just take it from someone like me or another youtuber um, this is this is edible you can eat this um, because yes you can eat the rose hips they are a very very good source of vitamin C they are ten times better than actually eating an orange but you can't eat the whole thing the very very pips the very very center of the of the seed has some fine hairs which can actually irritate your gut on that sort of stuff and cause um, indigestion bowel problems yeah so you need to know this stuff you're only really going to know it by reading these things so you, these things tell you how to do it and how to, and then it's just going out there or going a course understanding what to look for for Christmas dinner which you just see me have but actually that's Two weeks in the two weeks in the future for me, but it's going to be a week in the past for you. Hey, <laughs> that's it. Let's get some food. Okay, so the best time to harvest rose hips. There's different versions of them, but the, say the best time to harvest rose hips is just after the first frost of winter. So I had one a couple of days ago. But I missed that one just because I broke my, my car broke at the same time. And the reason the reason is um that it's just after the first frost is because all the sugar we, all the plant will send a load of sugars to the fruits to protect them. So now just after the frost we had one this morning, um, all the all these berries, all this fruit is actually gonna be nice and sweet. So um, when I make my leather it's gonna be a really really nice sort of snack. It also makes a really good trail snack as well. I try not to decimate the entire tree just because I want other plants and animals to eat it as well and it's good just to spread it around now I'm just going to take a few from different places not too low because other things can do things on them yeah dogs and that so I'm just gonna pick some up I want a good I want a good sort of two three hundred grams to make some decent sort of stuff I'm sort of come over there. and this one bush there's another bush over there it's gonna keep me going for some time so during the second world war rose hips were used um quite heavily as a, as a as a source of vitamins for the troops on the front lines because the citrus fruits were getting harder and harder um to get to get into the front lines like lemons and oranges and stuff like that because the germans just um keep the control of the of the channel so the British public, we went into looking for natural sources, and rose hips was a really, really good source of, of nutrition. Sort of come around there, and also good preservative as well. And you can harvest this in the winter time. The best time is it's November, December. You can harvest the stuff, and then you can preserve it as jellies and jams, and also that's a good way of sending food out to the front line or keep it inside your house as a rationing. You could get natural jellies and that because of sugar levy. So being able to have something which is high in sugar, it's self halves at the right time of year, allows us... Uh, I'm stuck! Uh, allows us to keep the sugars sort of on it. It's also, it also makes a really, really good trail sweet. Um, so if you're going out walking with your kids, that sort of stuff, just make it into little leather bites. 
where you can just break it up. And you just cut it up and put it inside little, little Tupperware containers. It lasts a couple of months, so when you make your fruit leather, um, if you put it inside flame film or an air tight container, it will actually last a couple of months inside your fridge. So making it in December, I've got stuff right through to sort of February time now. Um, of sort of snacks coming through, hence why I want to give a good harvest of this stuff today. That uh, um, it's going to keep me going in the next couple of months. Okay, so I've got a nice little haul we can just see just in here. We're going to go back, back on now, take a walk back down the Merritt's Way, back to the house, and then what we're going to try and do um, over the next probably few hours or next day or so, I'm going to turn this into fruit leather and also make myself a little rose hip tea just to. All the hard work we've just done just over here as well but that's it let's move on to the next scene okay so hi guys so now it's getting ready to do the fruit leather so out of the rose hips we harvested a couple of days ago they've been in the fridge I've just rinsed them and washed them and all we're going to do now we're going to top take the tops and the bottoms off and then we're going to put them inside the pan and we're going to put a very thin layer of water over the top of them and then put them onto a low simmer for around about half an hour to soften them right up to then extract the juices out of the rose hips and then we're going to then crush them and we're going to sieve them and then we're going to strain them um, into a little solution then put them back into the pan again to, to boil them up to make them into a nice little thick syrup and then we're going to put them to a low oven so my oven goes to 75 degrees is the lowest I've got I'm going to prop, the, prop it open and I'm going to leave it in the oven overnight um, to, to hopefully to ev evaporate the moisture out of most of the boiling and the condensing we're going to do now to give it a nice fruity lever sort of thing. Once you've done that you can seal it back into one of these tubs and keep it for about three months, two, three months inside the fridge. So that is the plan. So we're going to do a little, little bit of montage now of me just doing those little things just to see how it actually goes. So this is the first time I've done this um, with this actual fruit so I'm intrigued to see how it works. You can also, if you don't want to use the oven, if you've got a de um, not dehumidifier, you, what's that device? Dehydrator, if you've got a dehydrator that will do the same thing, you can put a nice little tray on the syrup and dehydrate it out of there, but we're going to be using the mother, the mother, the oven method, so let's get on to it now.
Okay, so it's been in the oven all night, and um, here we go. So we've got some, we've got some fairly good bits of leather sort of coming out there. So I'm, I'm actually impressed with that. It actually works quite nicely. It feels like it does actually feel like the leather is all shiny and glossy. So that is going to be well. That that was the snack which we made. It's the first time this is. I think if I did it again, I'll probably put a parchment paper down. And leave it on top of that, they're a lot easier than trying to scrape off the bottom of the pan. But other than that, a few more berries, a few more syrup, a bit more parchment paper. And you've got yourself a nice little healthy little snack for out in the woods. And that's it for now. Just remember, it's better to be warm in the wilderness than to fight and struggle. Until my next little catch and cook or harvest or whatever we want to do, I'll see you then. Bye for Bye. now.